everyone, welcome to my channel, The Orchid Hut. My name is Dana, and today, well, tis the season, we are going to be talking about Phalaenopsis bloom spikes. What you can expect, how you can get a spike, what a spike looks like, and, you know, just in general, a lot of information about Phalaenopsis bloom spikes. And the reason I'm doing this video today is because yesterday, when I was doing a, a check-in with all of my orchids, I noticed my very first bloom spike. And this is very unusual. I don't think I have ever noticed a Phalaenopsis bloom spike in November. I think the first bloom spike that I've gotten that was the earliest was probably in late December, early January. I would have to go back and look at my notes. But it's really unusual that I have uh, a bloom spike already in my uh, area, which is very subtropical, but I attribute it to the fact that we have had unseasonably cool temperatures at night, days in a row. Uh, so October had some really, really cool nights, as well as continuing now into November. And I do believe that for those Phalaenopsis that are triggered by cooler evenings, and not all of them are, but for the ones that do recognize that as a signal to produce a bloom spike, I think it is working a bit earlier in my area this year. So I would be curious to know if anyone else is noticing um, earlier bloom spikes. Okay, so let's kind of get started into the, the nitty gritty details here. The first thing that I want to do is move these two out of the way so that we can talk about the orchid that does have the bloom spike. And of course, it would be my largest Phalaenopsis. This is the one that's featured over and over again in a lot of my videos. Uh, I need to give her a name. If anybody would have a suggestion for a name, um, she's, she's a white Phalaenopsis when she blooms. Two years ago, she had a spike that had 13 blooms on it. It has never double spiked, which is actually okay with me because I think double spikes drain the plant a bit more and I would rather have one very stunning show-stopping bloom spike than two that are maybe, eh, you know, less than impressive. So um, I'm happy that she just puts out one really good bloom spike typically. Uh, last year the bloom spike was maybe not quite as robust, but we'll see what happens this year. So let me see if I can zoom in here with this camera. And if, when I process this video, if you can't, um, see this really well, then I'll just take a still photo of it. But I'm going to try to zoom in here so that you can see the bloom spike. And the way that you can tell this is a bloom spike and not a root is because first of all, it does not have a pointed tip like an aerial root would have. Notice right here, there's a root just for comparison. And you can tell that the root has a pointed tip. There's a portion of it that is green, and then it turns into that sort of silvery gray color that we expect to see with Phalaenopsis roots. So the bloom spike is going to be more green, and it's not going to be pointed. If you look carefully, uh, some people would say that it looks like a little mitten, some people would say that it looks like a little flattened paw. I always tease and say it looks like a cloven hoof, like from a goat or a deer or even a little pig, because you can see if you look really closely, especially as it gets a tiny bit larger, there's kind of a split that happens right at the tip of the bloom spike. So I'm hoping one of these tries here to focus actually can show you that. Okay, so definitely a bloom spike. 
Now, in the coming days, I will need to be deciding about how to train this bloom spike. This Phalaenopsis has such a, a wide wingspan that I am going to need to train this spike to arch over in the same plane, if that makes any sense. Because if I have the bloom spike arch over to the front or the back of the plant, then this is even going to take up more room in my growing space. So uh, because my growing space is full, I am going to need to train this bloom to kind of arch over in the same plane that the leaves are growing. Okay. Now the other thing that you'll notice is that um, the bloom spike is appearing two leaves down. And this is the typical location for where bloom spikes occur. So if you count down from the crown of the plant, one, two, and then in this space right here where the leaf joint is, that's where you'll have a bloom spike occur. And it could be on this side of the plant, or it could be one, two leaves down, and then in this leaf joint right here. So that's always this place to watch for bloom spikes. And the other thing to know is that a bloom spike will never occur from the front or the back of the plant. So the bloom spike is never going to grow out from the front of the axis. It's always going to be in a leaf joint, two leaves down. Now that's just you know the typical rule but if you're watching for spikes that's the place to look. So because this orchid has been well cared for it has enough energy to produce a bloom spike and because there's space for a bloom spike to develop then this orchid is sort of set and ready to go when conditions are right it will put up the bloom spike. This one I do think is triggered by lower temperatures at night, but not all Phalaenopsis are that way. So let's look at another one. And I know a lot about the, um, the history of this one uh, because I've had it for, I don't know, maybe five years. This Phalaenopsis is a summer bloomer. It always has been that way. It is not at all triggered by anything that has to do with day length or temperature. It always blooms in the summer and the bloom spike fades maybe like around October because it wasn't all that long ago that I cut the bloom spike from right here. And you can tell by the growth pattern of this one that this is the new leaf, leaf growth that happened after I cut this bloom spike. And inside the pot, well, that's like new root growth. So this Phalaenopsis just has, you know, a different nature to it. This is just the way that this one is. And I don't expect this one to even begin having a bloom spike until uh, probably late spring of next year. But um, now that it's growing a new leaf, the bloom spike will be one, two, three leaves down. So it would be in that leaf joint or it would be one, two leaves down in this leaf joint. So because it has put on new growth, it also has room now to put on a new bloom spike the next time it's ready to bloom. Okay, now let's look at one more example. And this orchid you may recognize as well. Um, this is um, my, the other two are no IDs, but this is my Phalaenopsis friends princess and it has been featured in other videos. It was the one that arrived with damaged leaves from heat stress and I did a video where I trimmed that damaged part away and applied cinnamon and you can see that that, you know, did its job. It's, it's doing okay. But this orchid has been in a lot of stress. It was shipped. It had to change environments. It had damaged leaves. It got repotted. I really don't expect this one to rebound within the next year, maybe within the next two years. But in its life time, it has had three bloom spikes. This one would have been from like two years ago. 
And then the two that I just recently cut off of this plant before I repotted it was located right there and right there. Well, the thing to notice here is that this orchid has not put on new leaf growth yet. So if it were to come again into the blooming season, there would be no room for this orchid to actually have a bloom spike because if I count two leaves down, one, two, it already bloomed from this location and will not bloom from there again. And if I count down this side, one, two, it has already bloomed from there and can't bloom from that location again. So before this orchid can even have an opportunity to bloom again, it has to put on new growth from the top of the plant. And, you know, it's going to have to recover first. So this is the reason why I'm always um, much more focused on good root growth, good leaf growth, good culture for the plant in general, and then the blooms are like the reward for having provided all of the things that the orchid needs. So I do think that everything this plant has been through, along with the two bloom spikes that it has, has just drained its energy and it's going to need time to recover. I mean, you can kind of tell that these leaves, while they're not exactly dehydrated, they're just, you know, maybe not quite as healthy looking as some of the other orchids I've had in my collection for a number of years. I counted yesterday when I uh, checked around on all my orchids and I have 24 Phalaenopsis now. About half of them are no ID. That includes all of my mini fowls. It includes my Bellina Phalaenopsis. It includes um, some of the little cakeys that I have started as seedlings. So all in all, I've got a number of Phalaenopsis. I believe since so many of them are no ID and I'm having a harder time in my brain keeping up with what orchid is doing what, I'm gonna have to give them like a little number on the pot so that as I'm taking notes and noticing what's happening with the orchid, they can at least have uh, a number in my notes and I'll probably put like a little label or something with the number on the side of a pot. Okay, so if you have any other questions about um, bloom spikes developing on your Phalaenopsis, please leave those questions down below in the comments. Remember, every orchid is an individual. They don't all bloom at the same time of year. They're not all triggered by the same conditions. But in general, if you have provided good culture for your orchid and the light conditions are right, then you should be able to get Phalaenopsis orchids to bloom. So thanks so much for watching. If you like this video or learn something new, please uh, hit the like button and the subscribe button will be in the bottom right hand corner of the screen. Tis the season for Phalaenopsis bloom spikes. I hope you're doing well with yours and talk with you next time.